Hello everybody, I'm Claire Steves from the Zoe um, COVID study and from King's College London and I'm here with this week's update. Um, I want to wish everyone a happy new year for a start. Um, so Tim is again off this week so I'll be taking you through the latest data and insights and um, we're going to be setting the record straight on some of the Omicron symptoms and a few questions that have been coming in over the last week. So the total cases are now over 208 thousand per day, with 93,000 of those um, are at least double vaccinated. Um, so I did say last week that we'd go over 200,000 and ensure we've done it, and it's not exactly an achievement that we we're thoroughly pleased with. Um, but I guess the good news is it's just an 8.4% increase on last week. So we can see that overall, the rates, are, the cases numbers are starting to slow down. It's really too early, though, to comment on whether or not it's peaked yet. And I think that's um, mainly because schools are going to go back next week and people are going to be back to work after holiday breaks. Um, and so it's going to be really important what happens in the next little while, partly because of the pressure we're already under at the moment. So um, people with at least two doses make up about 45% of the total daily new cases. And this um, could be because of a few reasons. I mean, Omicron seems to be much more successful at um, infecting those with previous vaccine, but um, thankfully not necessarily leading to hospitalization. Um, so if you've only had two doses of your vaccine so far and you're eligible for a third dose, please do book it in now. Um, the graph shows people with both two and three doses. So at the moment, we calculate that in the overall in the UK, one in 25 people have COVID. Again, this is more than in last week. And in London, it's one in 15 people um, and everywhere else is now catching up. So be really cautious if you're meeting up with people um, and avoid going out if you've got a cold. Looking at the NHS's hospitalisation data, hospitalisation rates are going up um, in most areas. And as we've all heard, in some regions, there are real difficulties, especially given staff shortages because of the need to isolate if you um, catch COVID. So the high rates of Omicron do seem to be reflecting now in high, higher rates of hospitalization, and the next few weeks are going to be a real trial for the NHS. However, if we look at London, um, and this is a, kind of an interesting area to look at because it's the area in the UK that was first affected by Omicron. In London, we can see that cases have really been coming down over the last week, despite New Year celebrations. And now hospitalization rates look like they might be stabilizing. For now, at least, let's see what happens when schools go back. So it's good to see that it's not been a slowing of this drop off. So I was really keen to look at whether or not we were still dropping in the last day or two, because if people had been going out and spreading the virus over New Year, we might have seen that slowing to stop. Um, but we haven't. It's still going on. So that probably means that in, in people's New Year celebrations, people have been very sensible. Um, so it's going to be these next few weeks where we really need to take personal responsibility to reduce contacts and keep the pressure from rising any further um, while our children get back to studying in school. So now let's look at the regional rates. So this graph shows the number of active cases. Um, so it's slightly different from the graph I showed before because it includes cases that maybe were affected a week ago. So you can see um, that they're arising in all regions except for London and the southeast is starting to maybe decline. Um, um, again, um, London seems to be reflecting the South African data, going up sharply and dropping down steeply. Um, but we can't be certain that this is going to be the same in all regions of the UK. And of course, um, after the next week when schools go back, um, things may go on the up again. Um, here's the latest Omicron data um, showing that um, in all English regions, and we unfortunately only have English regions for this, it's almost 100% of cases that are now Omicron. Um, this, is, this means that we will now stop reporting on Omicron numbers on their own because we can assume that nearly all symptoms reported in the app um, in England are now related to Omicron. So now for a bit about symptoms of Omicron. Um, according to the latest ranking of symptoms reported on the Zoe app by contributors who've tested positive in the last few weeks, so they're in the Omicron period, we're seeing the following top five. Runny nose at the top, headache, 
and any sort of fatigue, mild fatigue and severe fatigue. Um, then sneezing, uh, which really we never saw before vaccination came in with COVID and sore throat. Those are the top five. So these are cold-like symptoms. And it remains the case that all the classic symptoms, fever, cough, and loss of smell are much less prevalent in the current positive cases. Now, in the last um, week, we've seen reports in the media showing that reporting that symptoms like skin rash, loss of appetite, vomiting, things like that are in a really core cool symptoms of Omicron. And I just wanted to put the record straight. That's not what we're finding in our data. Here's the rest of the list. Um, looking down the list at the top 20 symptoms, we can see the following trends. Things like skin rash, which we did see reported in, back in 2020 as a symptom of COVID, often not a symptom that came right at the beginning of the disease, but maybe a little bit afterwards. Um, uh, that sort of symptom doesn't actually appear in the top 20 at all. Um, but it is still a symptom that can be reported with COVID. Loss of smell is way down at number 17. Skip meals has always been a symptom that we've identified, but it's down at 16 now. And vomiting, we don't see appearing in our list of symptoms at all. So the key takeaway is that the most reported symptoms of Omicron are really very much like a cold, um, uh, especially in people who've been vaccinated. So if you're feeling at all under the weather, please make sure that you get a test Make sure you're clear of COVID before arranging to meet with anyone you don't live with. Um, and remember, if you log your symptoms on the Zoe COVID app, um, we'll invite you for a PCR test and you can find out whether that's what you've got. So let's look at different age groups. Um, so here we can see from this graph that um, both children and people who are young adults, 18 to 35 year olds, um, the incidence of COVID infection is going down. And this could be due to schools being out and universities being closed. Um, so for next week, um, the government introduced mask wearing in classrooms. Um, so it's possible that as long as the rules are followed, we may not see such a dramatic spike as we've seen previously. Uh, so fingers crossed about that. Um, as we've seen throughout this pandemic, um, there are increases in cases which tend to happen over term time. So it'd be interesting to see whether or not there's another surge in infections in COVID as children's return to the classroom. So this is a graph looking at um, respiratory symptoms in people who test negative for COVID, that's in the, uh, in the orange line, and people who test positive for COVID, um, that's people in the blue line. Um, and looking at this graph, you can see that colds and COVID that looks like a cold are pretty much equally um, as likely if you've got um, cold-like symptoms. Um, of course, this is COVID with just with respiratory symptoms. So in the first graph, we saw um, that there was a bit of a slowing. We don't see that in this graph, and that's really interesting. And I think that might be because this is only respiratory cases. And there are quite a lot of people that might get COVID and really have no symptoms at all. And young people, we've seen before in other variants, sometimes have different symptoms, like abdominal symptoms, um, and therefore wouldn't be in this blue line here. Um, and age and symptoms is something that we'll be looking at in close detail, as we did with other variants, to see whether there are differences across the age groups. The other thing that's really interesting about this graph is that the, um, the shape of the curve with the non-COVID colds right now, where it's going down, um, is not the same as with um, COVID itself, which is going up. And we've never really seen that dramatic difference between these two um, before. And I guess this could be due to a variety of reasons. One is that Omicron is really very highly transmissible and it may be, have been less sensitive to schools closing, things like that than common colds. Um, but it could be something else. It could be that Omicron is actually outcompeting colds or maybe our immune systems, because we've been vaccinated, are quite hypervigilant in this context where they're being stimulated by potentially um, exposure to the virus, then other colds are not in circulation so much. So I think that's going to be something very interesting to look at in the next few weeks. So for my conclusion this week, Omicron is now the dominant variant in the UK, making up nearly all cases. The symptoms we're seeing in the app are much more like a cold than anything else, um, uh, especially in people who are vaccinated. Um, however, with cases the highest we've ever seen, we still need to be really cautious and do what we can to protect ourselves and others. Um, with cases rising in older age groups still, um, 
and, and let's be clear, it's older age groups that are most likely to become hospitalized and become ill. Um, it's um, really important that we take care over the ne next few weeks. The system is already under immense pressure. And so if you've got any kind of cold-like symptoms, make sure you take a test before you go and see friends or relatives. So as I've said, um, the big thing that's gonna happen in the next uh, week or so is that schools are going back children will undoubtedly get the variant and pass it on. So the whole system, um, health system and beyond, is already under huge amounts of pressure. We need to take personal responsibility to not spread it around unnecessarily. Um, so that could be in the form of wearing masks. It could be staying away from busy, crowded places, making sure if you're going to meet up, you meet up outside um, and making sure you've got the vaccine dose, uh, you know, you've got the whichever dose is next for you, you've got that dose as soon as you can. We'll be doing more analysis on the Zoe, Zoe COVID study in the next few weeks to give you updates on the effectiveness of the third vaccine against Omicron. It'll be, it was really good to see initial data coming from UK HSA, suggesting that it's 88% effective in keeping people out of hospital with Omicron. Um, so it's really essential to get that third jab if you've not already done so. We'll be um, keenly looking at symptom severity and duration of symptoms, so long COVID, um, with this variant um, as soon as we can. It's thanks to all our contributors like you that we've been able to keep providing this amazing data and important insights in the pandemic. So thank you. Um, and make it your New Year's resolution to continue reg uh, logging regularly um, uh, your reports on the Zoe COVID study app. Um, and please remember to like and subscribe to our channel. Um, Tim will be back next week for his first video update of 2022. Um, so that's great. Um, and I hope to see you all again soon. Stay safe and keep going.